This is about you. This is who you are. We decided that we'd form the Sandy Ground Historical Society. We had the, the town included in the state and national registers for historic places. We are a program site for the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. We've see, received the Mayor's Award for our contribution to culture and, and to history. We have been on CTV uh, several times. We've been on Channel 1, we've been on Channel 2, we've been on Channel 7. Um, we have some pieces that are in the uh, New York Historical Society. They borrowed them from us when we, uh, when they set up their uh, children's museum there. And uh, we also have some pieces that are part of their ancestors' way. Staten Island Vance has given us incredible uh, coverage in terms of uh, our activities. And we see about 3,000 school kids a year. We go out to um, community groups, senior groups, and we make presentations on the history of Sandy Ground. So that I always say that those that don't know about us don't want to know it because we're out there everywhere. And, and because we offer the quilt class to the ladies, we put this quilt exhibit up that talks about squares that people made of the church. Okay? And over here, every year, the church has something that they're called, uh, that's called uh, Family Day. And these are the families. This is the church. These are some of the families that represented descendants of uh, the original settlers. It's something with the waterways with the uh, noble museum last night. But anyhow, the gatekeepers came to us and they wanted to reseed all the beds again. And since we're probably the only living uh, oyster-based community on Staten Island, uh, they came to us and um, this young man here, he went down and he, um, he put, um, they gave us an oyster basket with oysters in it, and he put it in the water down in Tonville, and he went every week and he measured to see if the oysters were growing. The point was, was the water clean enough for the oysters to grow? And sure enough, they did. Cool. So then they took us out and on a boat out by the Statue of Liberty, and we threw the first ceremonial, first uh, group of oyster shells into the water. The question is, did the oil, and this is the basket that we use to do that. Okay, that's an original uh, oyster basket. And um, the, thing, uh, the thing is that yes, they did grow, but you still couldn't eat them. Still couldn't eat them. So I know that there's some activities going on now uh, with the bay keepers and the harbor school where they're going to want to re-see re, um, the beds again. And we'll be in touch with them, and we certainly will be willing. This is our brochure that tells about us, and this is the uh, brochure on this exhibit. Now, as we go into the next room, this, of course, and this exhibit is called uh, Binding Ancestry, and it's quilts made by our, uh, the people who participated in our quilt classes. Quilts were always a very important part of uh, the Civil War, a part of the African American community. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been down to George Washington's home. Well, in a room about this size, they have living quarters for three families. Now, <laughs> <laughs> A bunk, a bunk, a bunk, top and bottom, top and bottom. And they use quilts, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the back. They use quilts not only for warmth, but they use it for privacy. 
And this is a, a, a tribute to our uh, strawberry farmers. This is the first people to, to settle out here with the Harris brothers. And they had been uh, buying uh, property out here. And they came out and they found out that the, sa the soil was sandy. And that is where the name Sandy Ground comes wow. from. Wow. Okay. So I always tell the children, if life deals you lemons, you make lemonade. Okay. They had sandy soil. They had to find a product that worked well in sandy soil. And that they did. And that product was strawberries. So they were said to have introduced the strawberry crop to Staten Island. And they were smart. Those two brothers were smart. They took their own uh, uh, product to market because there used to be boats that come around that would buy your product. They did away with the middleman and uh, they took the strawberries to market and they became, you know, fairly well off through that. They had grew, grew up, they had lots of uh, property out here and other people began to move in. So the first ones were the strawberry farmers. Then the oystermen came, okay? And the community continued to grow. Bishop Forge, and you see we have this diorama here of the Bishop Forge, okay? He made uh, uh, tools for the oyster industry, and he made the transition to the new people coming in because he made iron fences for the new houses that were going up. This over here is the quilt that our quilt class made in honor of uh, the Bishop Forge. He operated the last privately held uh, for, uh, forge in the city of New York. And that forge was destroyed by fire. Again, fire destroyed the last privately held blacksmith shop in the city of New York. So uh, what can we say? So Bishop came to us and asked us, did we want to buy his property? And we told him, sure. <laughs> and we went to the then Senator Markey, who was also a his history buff, and he gave us the down payment for uh, for the Bishop uh, Ford, Ford property. And it's right down the street, 1448 Woodrow Road. Okay. And one day we hope it'll be the site of our, of our state-of-the-art uh, museum. We bought this house here as our headquarters and museum from uh, a gentleman who didn't want to sell to the developer. And uh, again, we got a grant and we were able to pay this property off. So we do own it all. Outright. Over here is a, um, and there's more information on Bishop, who he is, his forge, and so on and so forth, uh, of people uh, shucking oysters, okay? And someone made a quilt square out of that, and so we left that also to hang in uh, in this quilt exhibit that we have. Out here, we have uh, a series of quilts made by some of the ladies in our quilt classes. And this is my favorite quilt, okay? This picture over here is hanging up at the New York Historical Society in their ancestors way. And at the top is John Pedro, who, who was a whaling captain. And he came over to the United States from Cape Verde, the island off of uh, Africa. And he came over here and he uh, married Eliza Weeks. From, wow. uh, oh, Weeks from, and they came out here and, and, uh, and, and settled. So that's my family uh, tree. Here, when I was telling you about the enslaved people, this, this quilt we took down and had it uh, evaluated by a quilt historian. And this, uh, this quilt, he says, is made by enslaved people. The material is a feed bags. You know, when people, they, when they have to feed in mm -hmm. for the animals, he would, um, they, the people would take it, put it together, this is it doubled, and then they didn't have uh, the sewing machines that we have now. And so they, they knotted them, so you'll see little knots all at different points, and that's what held the, uh, the quilt. This is another um, quilt uh, family, and uh, talk, uh, 
Takadon and Meeks, and she put her family tree in the middle. She is a uh, um, Native American, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that's her ancestry, and her, the other part comes from um, uh, a Staten Island family by the name of uh, Meeks, okay? Mm -hmm. And then she also made this quilt over here for her son. He was a, a, a firefighter, uh, Richard, uh, Richard Meeks. This is one of the families that are uh, still coming out to worship church and church out here. And these are five generations of women from that, fa from that family. This is my husband's family. <laughs> and I did that really for his niece and so it would be nice to add it into uh, our exhibit here. This one is the uh, Herring family who were cousins of mine. So you'll see this is Pompeo again and he's over there in the middle. And so you see some, you see some repeat pictures. And this was a first time quilter. So uh, she, put the picture of a whole family here, and then put the family names. So there's a, a different ways to do it. Uh, how we have extended that is that when the older children come out, we go ahead and we get a, uh, a picture of the children. We want them to begin to think of themselves and their heritage. And so we start them by saying, okay, you're going to start your family quilt and you're going to be in the middle of it. So we wow. take the pictures, we transfer them to cloth. That's how these pictures got transferred to cloth. And we have them decorated. Now the plan was, was, it, was for them to go home, take it back, take it home, and then start their own family tree. But what has happened is that when they go back to school, the school is making a class picture out of those uh, squares. So there's two things that we do here. The, l the younger ones, we give them a, and I'll talk a little bit more about, we give them a doorknob hanger. And on the doorknob hanger is an abolitionist. And we tell them to decorate that, and that becomes, you know, that's the underground railroad system. For the older children, fourth and fifth grade, we have them begin their family uh, tree. This, again, it was done by somebody in our class. And um, so you can see it's an art, for, it can be an art form, or it can be a story quilt. And what we, um, which her idea was, this is done by Julie uh, Lewis, was that everyone is beautiful in their own, but they're all different. So you see, this is beautiful, that's beautiful, this, and that, that's, and we're all stars. That's, that was her thought in putting this quilt together. This is a quilt, again, that was done by the class, and it's African American history, in that it shows various stages of uh, President Obama when he, his inaugural, his family, and so on and so forth. Very important part of African American history. And um, what this is, is a map of the structures that are still left in the community. We got pictures of the uh, houses, and you'll see that all of these houses and buildings are still left in the community. This is the museum, and we have the ch here's the church over here, and these other houses that are scattered throughout everything else that is there. And over here is a picture of uh, my grandfather and his mother. And how do we find it? My daughter uh, was particularly attached to uh, Pop Pedro, who was in fact the town mayor and lived to be 106 years old with all of his faculty. And she, she said, Grandpa, what do you got in that closet? He said, she, he said oh, just some stuff. She said, can I see it? Ah, and finally, by her asking him over and over again, he allowed her to go in. And she found these pictures of him when he was 21, and that 
is his, uh, that's his mother. So what we do, through this we tell uh, youngsters, ask people in your family, what was it like when you were growing up? Who was your mother? Who was your father, in case they don't know, you know? And to help them begin to think about tracing back their own heritage back to Africa, I guess, uh, which is where we all came from. Started from the I know that the real East. And this here is a bill of sale, 14 year old girl, that was sold right here on Staten Island as part of a larger estate. Now this room is a very special room. This is was the exhibit that we had up before the quilt exhibit, okay? And this exhibit is now on loan. One of our problems in terms of, we, the thing is that we want this information out to the young people, and we weren't able to get it out to the high school students. They didn't have the, um, they didn't have, they, they didn't have one teacher you see, because one teacher brings the class out here. They, they, take se they have several teachers in several classes over the course of the day. And so uh, it, we really were not able to reach them like we wanted to. And so um, the Staten Island colleges, Wagner, St. John's, and, and the College of Staten Island, have a program called 30,000 Degrees for Sustainability. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to get the young high school students interested in going to college, okay, mm -hmm. and, and putting it in their mind early. And so we were able to um, partner with St. John's University, where we took the original of this uh, exhibit down and we uh, gave it to, uh, we lent it to um, St. John's, and it's up there now, and it should be up, I think, until the end of uh, March. I go up there, and I am and able to speak to them uh, up there at St. John's, and they have this whole exhibit, this right here, they have up in St. John's. Each one is a quilt square. These are copies of it, because I use that when I, when I travel. Okay. But each one is a, a quilt square made by one of our quilters, and uh, there's a, a story behind uh, each one. The uh, one piece that uh, they don't have is this, they do have a, a picture of it, is this piece right here. This piece is uh, uh, a write-up about uh, Louis Napoleon, who we had, who lived part of his life in Sandy Brown. And we had him included in the state and national uh, registers of, uh, I'm sorry, in the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. And this is a quilt square of his house. Now, each one of these are quilt squares. Amazing thing about Louis Napoleon is that, you know, it, the um, uh, National. Uh, Anti-Slavery Society, the U.S. Anti-Slavery Society noticed him. He was down by, the, he worked down by the piers in, in, in Brooklyn. And um, so they said, look at that young man, who is he? So they hired him ostensibly as a janitor, but he was really an underground railroad agent. Wow. Whenever those ships came into New York, he knew everybody on the dock. He wasn't where they came from. And um, he was able to, um, if somebody came in, there was a, a, a gentleman who, who had um, escaped from Georgia and came into New York, and the captain found him. So the captain was gonna hold, was holding him, and was gonna take him back to Georgia. But you know, he Louis Napoleon talks to everybody, so he yes. went down and filed a writ of habeas corpus. And so the captain had to present this man, and once he did, the court said, you're free, you're in New York, we don't have slavery in New York anymore, wow. and you're, you're, you're governed by the New York law. And the same thing for another group, these people bought uh, some people that they, they came to New York and they were going to take them out west uh, as part, being part of uh, slavery, 
And um, again, Louis Napoleon found out about it and went to court. This was called the Lemon Case. And that case went all the way to the Supreme Court of New York. And they said, You're in, he's in, they're in New York, they have a right to freedom. And so those people were also set free. Plus he moved about 3,000 people from New York up to Syracuse and to uh, Albany. And from there, they were going to move them over to Canada because they passed the Puget of Slave Act, which meant that these bounty hunters could go into any place and pick you up. So he, he was very important. And then what, what really convinced them was that uh, we have his death certificate. And on his death certificate, they list as his occupation underground railroad agent. And this, uh, again, over here, we have the symbols of the, supposedly the symbols of the underground railroad. This one is supposed to uh, represent the bear's paws. If you saw bear's paws, it, it's, it's supposedly people hung these uh, quilts out for people going by to see, people who, are, who knew the Underground Railroad. And this is the flying geese. And they would turn it, fold it in a way that pointed north. Because wow. remember, they ain't going with a GPS. <laughs> They're not going with a compass. <laughs> There's also one that's supposed to be, I follow the drinking gorge. These are all parts of the symbols of the Underground Railroad that people use to uh, help to find their way. We have a collection, the Gibbons Gums collection, and then the Sum of the Mast. And this piece, again, something that was made by uh, one of our quilters. And again, as a work of art, and we like to show that also because depending on what mood you're in, you could have that, or you could have this. That's amazing. Yeah, it's the back, the back piece. You can make a quilt that it could be plain on the back, or you could have something else so that you could turn it around. And of course, we like I said, we've been on, on channel seven, we've been on channel two. We have our own film called The Sandy Ground that uh, we show to the children uh, here. And um, we think they leave there. I, we know that, and we emphasize that Staten Island offered a safe place for African Americans to come and to build a community. Okay? And that place was right out here in the south shore of Staten Island. And given the opportunity, that's what they did. 180 families, two churches, two schools, their own businesses. It's a very positive story about uh, African American free, uh, freemen's lives and a positive story about Staten Island. And uh, we're very glad to have the opportunity to uh, tell it. We've expanded some. We've had the uh, Harlem Children's Own uh, Children out. We've had uh, a couple of schools out from Queens, a couple of schools out from Brooklyn. So the word is beginning to really spread uh, 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 around, you know. Yes. And we're really pleased to have uh, uh, Staten Island Cable out to uh, do a piece on us. You see, we celebrate Black History Month all year round. So we don't have a specific program for Black History Month because okay. we celebrate it all oh, yeah. year round. This is about you. This is who you are.